Funding is provided by a grant from New York State Senator Catherine M. Young, representing Western New York's 57th District with a local office in Olean. Senior Report is made possible by a grant from Fredonia Place, a continuing care retirement community providing dignity in a modern luxury environment. From the Access Channel 5 television studio in Mayville, it's Senior Report with Reed Powers. Senior Report is broadcast live throughout northern Chautauqua County on Saturday morning from 9 to 10 a.m. each week. Call in and share a thought, make a comment, ask a question, or simply wish someone a happy birthday on Chautauqua County's only live call-in senior program. Since 1995, Reed has been bringing viewers hundreds of interesting guests informing the community on a variety of subjects. Here's the host of the show, Reed Powers. Well, good morning, everyone, and welcome to one of the last episodes uh, of the Senior Report. Coming up in July, we're going to have a little surprise for you. I keep uh, teasing you with this, but we're not quite ready to tell you all about it. But in the next couple of weeks, we're going to give you little snippets of what you can expect to see here at uh, Access 5 at this time slot. Okay, I'm Doc Hamels, and I welcome you to the show. Uh, I want to remind you this is a call-in show and that if you have anything you want to share, whether it's an anniversary, a birthday, um, just your uh, feelings on the world at large, well, keep it short. And, uh, <laughs> or you have a question for our guest today. And we have our most interesting show today, and uh, you'll, you'll understand why in a little bit. Well, I want to cover a few things here before we get started. If you are watching this and you forgot, you might still have time to run over to the Children's Safety Education Village. They are having their first, I'm totally not supposed to say first annual because you don't know if there's going to be a second one, but they seem to be determined there will be a second one, so we'll go with it. Their first annual dash and bash that we've been talking about right along. And I think the only thing left that you can sign up for is what I'm going to enter. It must be like a kitty walk. It's a 1K fun walk at 10 uh, excuse me, at 11 o'clock today. But already, I think just four minutes ago, they started the 5K walk run, and the bike tour started at 8:30. That's going around the lake. So by the time we get there, we're gonna see some tired folks. But anyways, it's a uh, if you still have time, come on over 11 o'clock. Do the the fun walk. It's ten dollars. It's a great. Uh, fundraiser for the village and everybody's gonna have a lot of fun and I understand there's gonna be some food and, and beverages all right um, lots of things that are going on right now gosh I saw the uh, the farmers market in Westfield there's there's concerts all over the place these days uh, one thing that's coming up uh, this Thursday uh, at infinity uh, if you are familiar over in Jamestown, it used to be the old Department of uh, Vehicles building. Uh, it's now the Jamestown Infinity Performing Arts uh, Program. And uh, they are going to host um, a hoot nanny. This is going to be the fourth one. And uh, Bill and I are, are actually the uh, guest uh, hosts 
I, I was I was going to come up with a new word, but I couldn't think of one. Anyways, uh, we're going to be hosting the thing, and usually there's like 40, 50 people there. If you have a guitar, a violin, no bugles, uh, harpsichord, uh, auto harp, uh, anything you've got, um, bring it over. This will be uh, 7 o'clock on 3rd Street in Jamestown, across from the uh, Reg uh, Theater. And uh, it's a lot of fun. It's free. And the whole idea is to bring people together, sing, enjoy music. And uh, we've had country, we've had uh, uh, drums from around the world, kind of a sound like a, a international drum sound. We do folk. Some people have done a little bit of light rock and so forth. So come on down. It's a lot of fun. All right. I have an announcement here. I got to check my iPad right now, my high tech stuff here. Mary Ann Spanos has some information she wanted me to share with you. Coming up in July, put on the specs here, and uh, July 18th, um, there's going to be a senior picnic, and she doesn't tell me where it is exactly. I think it's at Midway Park, up the, my little earpiece. That I just have this, I have this guardian angel that watches over me and whispers things in my ears. Um, July 18th, uh, the senior picnic, I'm going to guess it's going to be in the middle of the day. At six dollars, and uh, um, I understand it's always a great time. And uh, so we're going to be talking about more of that next week. But she asked me to uh, announce that. Also, Marianne, she she sent me all kinds of emails the other day. She wanted me to remind you that also today is the second day of the Yasu Festival. And uh, in celebration of the festival, I was at Dimitri's the other day, and I had a souvlaki sandwich. So, um, if you have, you've never had a souvlaki or a, a gyro or any Greek food, it's awesome. Especially the feta cheese and the special Greek salad dressing they put on it just makes it pop. When uh, I was a rocker up in Buffalo years ago in my late teens, we used to get done with a, with a uh, gig and it'd be like 1.30 in the morning. And the only place you could find that was open at that uh, time at night was a place called Towns Red Hots down on, I think it's Chippewa. I don't think it's there anymore. But it was a great little Greek restaurant. And we used to order, I know, this seems hard to believe. I, I actually drank beer in those days. I don't do that anymore. But we would have a beer and we'd be exhausted and we'd order a souvlaki and it was like on. Believable, just made your mouth water. My my water, my mouth's water right now. Thinking about it, so the Yasu um, festival is going on right now, and you can check in the newspapers right in the headlines today that they're, uh, they're it's going on from 11 o'clock this morning to 11 o'clock tonight. And I know Mary Ann will be there. She helps cook, although she's not Greek. She's married to uh, Georgie there, and and his whole family and their kids. So lots of fun. Uh, enjoy yourself there. Oh. Okay. Okay, next thing I want to talk about is the fact that coming up July 4th, 4th of July, uh, the uh, Destination Chautauqua team, it's really us guys with a, new, with a different title, but we're going to be broadcasting live. The uh, 4th of July, July parade provided it's not uh, storming or electrifying us, right Jeff? <laughs> <laughs> Right, Randy? <laughs> Two years ago we were doing it and about electrocuted us. So, but last year was really nice, so we had a good time. Okay. Um, one of the things that I really uh, wanted to share with you today, and this is a, on a very serious note and a personal note as well. Um, at 10 o'clock today, a very interesting event is going to take place, not around here. Uh, Chrissy, if you can bring up that photo that I sent. Okay. I don't know if you all remember this gentleman, but this was one of my very good friends, is Jack Scahill. Uh, Jack was a superintendent at Brockton for many years and, and my uh, colleague. That picture we took down in uh, Florida about six months before he passed away. And uh, there, as you can see, Jack was very healthy. He was uh, vibrant, and after that, I didn't hardly recognize my old friend. So today, a lot of people may not know this about Jack. Jack served in Vietnam. I don't know what years and so on, but he was a medic, as I recall. And um, he came back, was very, had a very successful career, had children, was married, and all that sort of thing. And then about three years ago, he pulls me to the side and he says, 
come here, sunshine. That's what he always called me. I go, I called him Curly. Well, I could call all you guys Curly. Anyways, <laughs> you'll see why here in a minute, folks. And uh, he said that uh, he wanted me to know that he had cancer. And I looked at him, I go, what? And Jack was a picture of health, as you could see even in that picture. Well, it turns out that Jack somehow had a latent cancer that didn't mani manifest itself until he was like 60-some years old. And the strangest thing about this particular cancer was that you could only get this cancer in one of two ways. One of which I believe is a certain racial uh, uh, situation where you have to have a certain racial or ethnicity or whatever, genetics perhaps, but uh, but, in this, but that couldn't have been Jack because of the situation. The other one was you could only get this if you happen to have been in Vietnam in a particular area and Jack was there. So Jack did pass away a couple years ago and uh, today at 10 o'clock, June 14th, there's going to be recognition uh, at the Veterans Memorial in Washington, D.C., and Jack will be interned at 2 p.m. in Arlington National Cemetery because he was now, after all these years, considered a casualty of the Vietnam War. That is sobering to me because you, we often think of the casualties that didn't make it home, and yet these wars are still taking our guys and gals one by one, uh, whether it's emotionally, physically, and, and, and so forth, spiritually. It's just, it's a, it's a terrible thing. And uh, with the whole situation with the Veterans Administration, uh, I can't say how important uh, the administration is for our veterans and to stay on top of these guys and gals, their health and so forth. Because in, like in Jack's case, uh, how would you know after all those years that you have the situation? And uh, it was due to, the, to his exposure down there. So anyways, I send my uh, condolences once again to Jack's family and I'm very proud to have known Jack and that he had served our country. Well done, Jack. Okay. Let's just uh, go on a couple other things here. Um, let's see here. Oh, big weekend. We got all the festivals going on, and tomorrow is Father's Day. Okay? Um, I know this seems hard to believe, but I am a dad. <laughs> I've got four kids. They turned out pretty well. They're all over the, the world at the moment. And... They got married and they had kids, so we have grandchildren. And some of those kids got married and had kids. And at the last count, this is the part that still seems hard to believe, I've got eight great-grandchildren. So uh, it's going to be a fun day tomorrow hearing from the kids, and uh, we're going to be getting together with family. And I hope that all the dads out there at least get a little breakfast in bed or uh, something, something fun to do. Okay, well, we're going to do a P PSA right now. And then we're going to bring on our guest commentary uh, with Karen Harvey. And then we have some <laughs> three guests. I'm going to take three people on at the same time today. So stay tuned. Have a look. A diagnosis of breast cancer changes your life forever. She told me I needed a mastectomy. I was scared. Absolutely in shock. But you need to know that you're not alone. There are teams of medical professionals, support groups, and therapists, and those who can help you plan for life after cancer. Before you undergo surgery for breast cancer, get the facts. Make sure you know your breast reconstruction options. For more information, visit broadayusa.org. Okay, and thanks for that. We are going to have a little bit of a theme about cancer here throughout the show coming up. But first, let's hear from our, our very fine friend, Karen Harvey. No she has some things. Oh, no, we're that. done with that. We, want to hear, we, got a, we got a new guy on the board, Jeff, obviously. <laughs> it's not <laughs> Okay, uh, now our, our good friend, Karen Harvey. Take it away, Karen. What I want to do is first ask a question, and it relates very much to what Doc has been talking about, and that is, what is the most important thing that we would invest in in our society? 
I think he answered it, our children and our grandchildren. We invest in a lot of things. We support and uh, give money to a number of things, and our government must represent us in that regard. But what we're seeing today is education being defunded or reduced in funding over the last 10 to 35 years. When I went to school, I can tell you what my tuition was at the state university. How about you, Doc? What was your tuition? When well, you I, had, I had a scholar incentive, so if I remember right, it was less than $500 a semester. So I'm going to say maybe like $300, something like that. It wasn't right. much. Right. Well, the thing is, the state and the federal government did support universities, did take care of the, the costs. Mm -hmm. Now they have withdrawn that funding. And we're starting to blame the students. Well, they're not ready, whatever, the costs are too much, they're taking on debt that they shouldn't do, they should be smarter than that. It's not the kids' fault, it's our system. We've reduced our military budget from 51% of our total budget, it was 51%, now it's 48. Where is that 3%? Did I do that right, 3%? <laughs> yep. Where is it going? Well, we do uh, buy out, help the banks when they default, they criminally default, the big, big banks. We uh, subsidize businesses and private industry and private institutions, but are we giving what we should? Do you know how many countries do not charge tuition for their public higher education institutions? Well, I know Germany, I believe, and so I'm going to guess, I'll say maybe four. Forty-eight. There are 48 countries <laughs> in the world. <laughs> Forty-eight, and I can list them. They include, of course, Iran and Russia and Cuba and Germany, and Italy, and Turkey, and Sweden, and Norway, and Venezuela, and Uruguay, and the United Arab Emirates, and Poland, and Peru. Goodness. It goes on and on and on. Uh, Malta, Kuwait, Ireland. How about that? Ireland's hey, a good place to go. go. There you Greece, go. Greece, uh, Pakistan. But proportionately, as we defund our universities, we end up funding prisons. Wonder why? Mm -hmm. Well, education has something to do with that, and so does our economy. Our economy, our national defense are going to depend on having the right uh, results from education, and I'm not just talking about higher education, all education is being defunded. It is definitely a drag on our entire economy, and the, the youth of today cannot get a financial footing. Uh, they can't buy homes, they can't start a family or cars, and this all has an impact. This past week, there was a piece of legislation defeated by the Republicans called the Bank on Students Emergency Funding Act, uh, spearheaded by Senator Elizabeth Warren from Massachusetts. And what she said was, let's reduce the interest that these people are paying. Do you know what our government charges our children interest for borrowing money to go to school? Well, it's probably higher than the di than the dividends that we're making on our on our uh, savings right now. So, if I remember right, I was thinking it was like six percent, but I, I don't know what the current rate is. What is it? It is seven percent. What? All she proposed seven percent. We are cannibalizing our own youth by charging 7%. our government, the people that represent us, seven percent. We're going to make. Uh, you can get a car for 1.99% at the credit right, union. Right, if it was competitive, but most of these loans are issued by the government. So they're going to make $66 billion off the student loans in the, in the recent five years, over this five-year period. Uh, Senator Warren calls this obscene, and I agree with her. I call it cannibalism of our own children, as Saturn ate his children in the Goya painting. Um, she uh, wanted to propose that we reduce it retrospectively, re retroactively to 3.68% 3 is what it was, uh, and they defeated it. Well, of course, that would be a little bit more out of the, the big budget, take the 3% from defense, I say, but what she said was let's enforce the tax rate for the rich. They really should pay 30%. Well, let's, let's enforce that. And we can recoup this money in no time. So anybody over a million bucks income should pay 30%. Well, that no was problem soundly here. defeated no, no, by the Republicans. No, 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 dear. So what we do is we say we prefer to subsidize the rich rather than the students who well deserve it. Our society deserves what we expect, which is a, an investment in our own future. I'd say our national defense, our crime prevention, and our economic prosperity depends on us really pushing for this. It will come up again, and I think it's an important thing to support. 
Thank you. Well put, Karen. And, and just if I can add to that, um, when I was uh, an administrator at the, uh, the Ed Hughes Educational Center and the WOC system, I used to go on the radio quite often. And uh, please take this the right way now. But I used to refer to the great white collar lie. The thing that you always hear constantly is go to college and, and get a job. That's not how it works. Okay, what, what the reality of life is, is that kids are jumping out of high school, they're trying to go to a really expensive school, they're doing what Karen says, they're racking up fifty, sixty, a hundred thousand dollars in debt, they, uh, they, get, they, they don't have particular direction sometimes, or they've changed their majors four times, they end up with some type of bachelor's degree in liberal arts or something or other, which they can't apply anywhere, they find that the jobs that are out there want some type of skill, or some kind of marketable uh, skill, mechanical, whether engineering or whatever, and uh, then they end up working in, in the service industry or the food industry. I don't know how many people I've interviewed, Karen, that uh, they say their real lo love of life would have been in one of the trades, but they went on to, to a four-year college thinking they were gonna find a job there, and that's not how it works. So my, my words of wisdom to anyone that will pay attention here is before you sign up for college, think about what you want to do and, and, and where your passion is. And maybe it's a two-year tech school. Maybe it's an 18-month certificate program. And I'm not, you know, once again, uh, espousing to any particular system. But what I'm saying to you is the most successful people I know today are the ones that have followed their passion that have gone and taken something that they could build on as far as a marketable skill and they've developed their own entrepreneurial skills and business and so forth. But if you're going to college, all you're going to do is rack up a lot of money in many cases and how many times they drop out of school before their uh, end of their freshman year. So. Well, seven out of ten now. Seven out of ten are now borrowing money yeah. and the universities are forced to take students from overseas to make more money because they get more tuition from them, which pushes out our students. Right. And the whole education system is dumbing us down. It's a business. And it's a business. You got it. Yeah, it's a business. And that's a shame. And you're absolutely right about the other countries. Uh, we've we visited, as you know, with many of the countries, and especially in Germany. But they, they've got a little different. They've, they've got it, they sort of got it right, in my mind. If you don't want to go to college, they will put you into a vocational school. And I can't remember the exact name for it, but it's, it's a vocational school and they push you along that track. And for those that go on to the higher university, if you mess up, you're gone. It's, it's not like you get a second chance, you gotta keep up your grades, it's free. You got, but the parents have to pay room and board, but the actual university now is free. So I mean, it seems to make sense, doesn't well, it? Well, why, why is it that those countries can afford to do that? I have no idea how, to, how it's working. Well, but. <laughs> I'll tell you one reason, and that is because they don't put 50% or 45% now into military. Yeah. It's not productive. It's destructive. Those countries, we have more money in military investment <laughs> in our military budget than all the other countries in the entire world. So they don't waste their money. I mean, Russia puts $69 billion into its military, we put 600 billion. Do you think we could defeat them if they uh, showed their missiles? <laughs> well, uh, with with a little less money. Right, and well, let's well, let's move on to this topic. But okay. I'll end on this one. I used to be so frustrated as a school superintendent. They would tell us you got to cut, 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 and all the money was going overseas into other things like weaponry and so forth, and. Uh, our educational system has been gutted, so we really do need to rework that from preschool all the way up through. Karen, as always, thanks for that good thought and prov uh, provocative discussion. And if you have any thoughts on that, call us in. Call in. Let us know what you're thinking on that. Okay. We haven't quite solved everything in the world today, but we're going to try another area that we're going to try to solve. I got three great guys here. Two of which are brothers, and you have to figure out which are which here because they all kind of look the same. <laughs> the glasses and the, and the hairstyle, they part their hair the same way. Folks, I want to uh, welcome our guests today. We got Galen Zook, we got uh, Randy Burt, and we got Jeff Zook. And uh, we're going to be talking about some real interesting stuff here today. Um, but I want to first start out with uh, let's start with Galen. Galen, um, you asked. Uh, 
these guys to get involved with the project last year, as I remember. And every Saturday morning, I see uh, see you guys talking, and you are quite the bike rider, and you came up this with this concept. I think it was last year. Was it that your first time? Actually, actually, Randy is the one that I've. Randy's the. the Randy was the catalyst. For All right. This, so tell us, tell us about um, what you want. What, what's going on here? What we've, what I, Randy and I last year. Um, and this has become something really big. This is the 19th year, and most people have heard of the ride for Roswell. And it is uh, Mitch Flynn, some guy up in Buffalo, started it 19 years ago. And his idea was get these people out on a bicycle and get sponsors, and we'll raise money for Roswell Cancer, Cancer Institute. To And all, all this money goes... Well, not all of it, but uh, yeah, sure. the majority of the money that we raise goes towards cancer research at Roswell Cancer Institute. And um, last year there was 8,000 riders. This year there's not quite that many. 8,000 bicycles. 8,000 bicycles. There, there's di 11 different rides that you can do, varying distances between 3 miles and 100, 100 miles. 3 to 100. Three I know where I'd be. Yeah. <laughs> it's a three-mile family three ride. <laughs> three-mile family ride. Remember, I told you about the one K I'm doing today. No, yeah. really, I, I have to work up to it. Yeah. Okay. And uh, last year, the ride raised over four million dollars. What? Over eight thousand people raised four, four million, million dollars. Wow. And the shirt that I'm wearing mm -hmm. is what I earned. Um, it's called the Extra Mile Club, and Anyone that raises a thousand dollars or more for the ride is part of the um, is part of the extra mile club, mm -hmm. and you get the shirt and you get some uh, special perks before and, and after the ride. Um, Oxygen and water. Water. <laughs> <laughs> uh, no, I actually my 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 real job I do deal with oxygen, so you know as as. Probably a lot. So you, bring, of so you bring your own. I just bring my own. Yeah, I'm not sure. I'm not sure my company would like really like that. But um, yeah, last year Randy and I did did the 44 mile ride. Oh my and, gosh. Uh, How long How long did it take you to learn to walk again? I mean, oh, 44 miles seems like like a long ride to me. Well, I. I average about 2,000 miles a year on my bicycle. Wow. Um, Good for you. There's, I, I enjoy it, but there's also a lot of health aspects to bicycling. Mm -hmm. I personally, I have diabetes oh. and I, uh, I track, I, I keep a very close eye on my, on my sugar mm -hmm. and I can tell after even a week, the difference mm -hmm. in my sugar levels sure. if I'm not riding. Sure. So in the winter time, it obviously, um, produces some some bigger challenges, but I do have a, a trainer that I can put in my house and, and ride my bike in the house, which is the most god awful boring. Yes, thing it is. I have to one too in your life. <laughs> <laughs> I've got one too, and it just stares at me. And I I say, do I play a guitar or ride a bike? You know, I'm the, a yeah, musician. The, alter, the alternative, and it's probably. Uh, just about as good as anything else is swimming in the winter. Yeah. We've got a couple of nice pools. Fredonia's is open. Oh, okay. uh, sure. uh, the one down at Turner Center at mm -hmm. Chautauqua, they've got hours during the winter. And uh, I plan on doing some of that this okay. winter. And it's only like 2 or $3 a session up to Turner. So okay. it's not exactly. Right. Well, let, let's get back to this Roswell ride okay. now. Okay. On your, uh, let's see, left s shoulder, it, I don't know if you want to put that to the camera for us, but uh, it sort of is, I'm assuming that sort of sums it up. Understand, what does that say, prevent? Understand, prevent, and cure cancer. Okay. So you said Randy came up with this originally. Well, Randy has done it. Randy had done it originally a couple years back, and he was always talking about, oh, I want to do it again, I want to do it again, I want to do it again. And one night I'm sitting at home and Randy sends me a message through <laughs> Facebook. Imagine that. <laughs> that says, I just signed up for the 44 mile ride. Uh -huh. And I was like, hmm. hmm. So I went and signed up for the 44 mile ride. And uh, the, the, the thing with that is the, 
it's not only the riders. There's volunteers that are needed too, mm -hmm. and there's so many so many things going on that just need you know people need, are checking in. They need volunteers sure. to help check people in. There's people out on the course to help help the riders make sure they go in the right direction. There's pick Randy up when he falls off the boat. Yeah, pick and Randy up when he. <laughs> Okay, well, let, let's let's uh, let me go to Randy, if you will. Okay, Randy. So, you started running this thing, ra racing this thing. What four? How many years ago? Um, I can't even tell you. It was a few years ago. Nice. My uh, sister had cancer. Oh. Um, I was just starting a bike ride. Uh, did some MS bike rides. Um. Mm -hmm. Well, I was out to Roswell with my sister, and uh, I picked up a brochure, and it's like, oh, this would be so cool. And, so, um, so, you had, so you had a family connection to this uh, race. Starting out one connection and then another uh -huh. and then friends. And um, once you find out, you know, it's like just everybody. But uh, mm -hmm. my sister, um, she went to Jamestown. Um, they discovered she had breast cancer. They did a biopsy. Um, Jamestown, the doctor there, wanted to remove both breasts. Mm -hmm. So um, we went for a second opinion to Roswell, mm -hmm. where I love to stand, and they have a piano player. Oh, yeah? For the people, you know, when you're in the lobby. I watched that while she was in. Well, they just were able to clean up a little around the breast, say both breasts. She went through the years of, uh, or the, not years, but there's like 35 uh, treatments, um, radiation treatments you okay. have to have. And mm -hmm. you have to have like five a week for Ooh. seven weeks. And, uh -huh. uh, she went through that, and she pretty much was cured. Okay. Um, but I saw the brochure out there, and I thought, wow, this is this is cool. I mean, I, it would be fun. The first year I uh, I went to Roswell or for the ride, it's at the University of Buffalo. Um, I did 62 and a half miles. Really? And That's it took me mean. about six hours. I <laughs> biked a little before that, and... I just came off like the week before doing a ride for Red from Fredonia to Westfield and back where I made uh, 45 out of the 50 and I was just dying. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but it's like, I got to do so 60. So if you can't do 45, why not go ahead and go oh, do 62 yeah, well, the following week? Now, Buffalo, well, I don't know. Anything past Dunkard's Buffalo to me. <laughs> so <laughs> University of Buffalo is in Amherst. If you go on the other side of the lake, there's another country. Did you know that? I heard that. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> he gets out a lot, I see. <laughs> but, um, so I took the ride, um, didn't know anything about it. I went out, I think I left at 3 o'clock in the morning, mm -hmm. drove to Buffalo, got my packet. I mean, they, I didn't know anything about the night before, um, and uh, I did the ride. Um, they have about every 10 miles, they have a rest stop. Now, part of the fun of the rest stop is to uh, just visit. And, um, they have How bananas. far are the rest stops About between? Every 10 miles. Every 10? 10 miles. So they, they, they're well set up. <laughs> but How long does it take to go 10 miles? For me? <laughs> Quite a while. All right. Galen beat me last year by at least two hours. But um, I started out the ride last year. I was feeling really good. But before I left, I didn't drink anything. Oh, that's not a good idea. I didn't idea. find a water station. I was going to grab some water yeah. and Gatorade. Uh-huh. Mm -hmm. Didn't I know the first that. rest stop's 10 miles. Well, oh Galen gosh. caught up to me, and I didn't ask for anything to drink because I was feeling good. And all of a sudden, about mile eight, it was like, Oh, boy. <laughs> <laughs> I stood there. Did I you spell that for me? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. I stood there. I held my bike. Oh, my gosh. And I sat on a guardrail and finally on the ground, and people were coming by. Okay, I'm okay. I'm okay. Uh, does anybody have anything to drink? Oh, my gosh. And uh, So your advice is? De er, hydrate. 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 <laughs> hydrate. 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 Now, do you guys use those uh, backpacks? With, no. With no. the Because I see a lot of the, the racers. I have, I have one of those. Mm-hmm. Um, my thing is I sweat profusely, and that's just one more thing to keep heat oh, in my okay. body. Okay. So I just I use bottles. Just, on, yeah. I use bottles on the uh, on mounted on my bike. Actually, my bike is right behind me. I was, okay. We're going to show some. We're going to show that here a little bit. All we'll, right. We'll go do that and how to get started in something something like this. But um, yeah, I remember uh, the, the reason I had to catch up is because at the start. Uh, of the ride, the, the the 62 mile and the 44 mile went off at the same time. At I think it was eight o'clock in the morning, 
and they limit the rides. To, there was 850 people in each ride, so there were 1,700 people Ooh. starting all at the same time. And basically, you form up. They use the parking lots mm -hmm. there at the UB Stadium, and that's the, the that's where you go out. You go down. Well, there's so many people, and they're just moving steady. The guy directly in front of me, his chain came off, oh. and he couldn't. He couldn't just. I mean, it got locked in, so he had to actually get off his bicycle and rip the chain out and oh put it back gosh. on. And the flow was so steady, I could not get out and around. So this Grid guy, mark, yeah. so Randy's off doing his thing. <laughs> <laughs> a short, and, uh, a short-lived lead. <laughs> I mean, eight mile adrenaline rush. You know, when you're with this large crowd. Pace yourself. Pace you don't yourself. Want to be the one pushing the bicycle, and uh, so, I, so I, there you go. So I caught up to him, I don't know, probably about four or five miles into the ride. And we're just talking, having a good time, and next thing I know, where's Randy? <laughs> <laughs> He's just, like, gone. And, and I knew we were pretty much planning on riding to the first rest stop together. Then, you know, I was going to do Randy rides a different <laughs> style of bike than I ride, and he doesn't ride the miles that I do, so... So what you're saying, he's Nobody slower. <laughs> um, no, I don't want to say that. <laughs> I was, Okay. I was being nice. But now, Galen, uh, uh, Randy rode for his sister. Is there a particular reason why you, you um, rode? I think I'll let my brother talk about that more. All right. Because he is more directly okay. affected. All right. Well, um, before we do that, I just want to remind folks that this is the Senior Report. It's live on Saturday morning right now. It's June 6, uh, 14th. 14th. I, yep. I almost really messed them up there. June 14th. And it's a call-in show. You can call us at 753-5225. If you want to share a, a survivor story about cancer, if you want to tell us about your experiences writing for cancer or, or anything else like along those lines, give us a call. Okay, so uh, we've heard from Galen Zook, who uh, is, he supports us here at, at Access 5 quite often on different little uh, errands. We got Randy Burt, you've already heard from, who's our usual cameraman. You probably didn't know this. And now we're going to go to our head engineer, who uh, <laughs> is sitting over here, and he's related to the other guy at the, at the other end with the beard and the same hair. Wait, but y'all got beards. All right. Do you realize y'all have different style beards? This is very well, interesting. Mine's mine's a little longer. A little longer, it, yeah. He's got a special be. reason for that. I have a I have a special reason for my beard. Okay. Is about three months ago. Uh, these two teenage girls that call me dad, they're not, I'm not actually their dad. Um, okay, asked, I believe you. Asked if they could uh, dye my beard pink for the ride. Really? Uh, yeah, so um, I told them I wouldn't cut it, I wouldn't trim it, and I would let them dye, the, dye my beard pink. So we're gonna do that on the, on the 26th. We gotta have a picture of that guy. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah. we uh, have. No. We're gonna get a few pictures. Send a picture in yeah. for the show. I got to see this. <laughs> and then another friend of mine said, "Well, why don't you get one of the the Mohawks that you see the Mohawks on the bike? Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Motorcycle yeah. helmet. Yeah, sure, sure. Why don't you get a pink Mohawk and put it on your bicycle oh, helmet? That, that so I decided I'd do that too. <laughs> but when I got looking at my, <laughs> but when I got looking at the the bicycle helmet, it has holes down the middle here. So it's got two little ribs right here, so I'm going to cut the mohawk in half and have a double mohawk. <laughs> okay. And so, and that's how I'm going to do the ride. Okay. So. Well, let's move on to our third guest, our head engineer here at XS5 and our senior report, Jeff Zook. Good morning, Jeff. Good morning. You've been very patient as these two guys have been talking up a storm. So what do you yeah, want to add it, to this it whole... Was kind of, it was really neat to hear about their adventures on their ride. Um, this is my first year, and I'm writing for my wife, Kathy. Okay. She passed away. It'll be five years in August. Okay. It's been a while. Wow. Um, yeah, Galen's sitting over here going, wow. Yeah. And it's like, yeah, time flies for those that don't have mm -hmm. to deal with that. My wife came down with breast cancer. Uh, I was in Fredonia uh, getting my bachelor's degree in communications, which is one of those nice degrees to have that don't quite get you as far as you might think it does. Mm -hmm. it, a lot of it is marketing, sales, and I do not, I'm not big on either one of those. So, anyhow, it, um, she said, go finish your college. Do, do what you want to do. 
and I really wanted to finish up college and do college and mm -hmm. do what I was doing. Yeah. She was a great supporter. She was probably, she was my biggest supporter. And it was very difficult to go to college and know that she was going to have to drive from uh, where we lived in Mayville to Jamestown to get her cancer treatments. Mm -hmm. And the rule in class was no cell phones on. Which, you know, as, as a teacher, it's like, you know, yeah. it's, you don't. So I told them, I told my professor, my wife has cancer. She's going for treatments. I'm keeping my phone on vibrate. Do what you need to do if you catch it. You know, I will leave. I will leave the classroom mm -hmm. if I get a phone call. I never did. Luckily, I never did. So it was, it was just a moot point. But, you know, it was like, um, you know. <coughs> but she went through all the cancer treatments all the radiation treatments all that kind of stuff uh some of it was painful mm -hmm. uh some of the things some of the drugs they use are basically alkaloid drugs which is very poisonous to the to the human body and it was painful for her so she went through all that uh, survived breast cancer, uh, the surgery, and all that kind of stuff. About two years later, she was diagnosed cancer-free, and we went around in, in April on spring break. She was working at the school at, in uh, special education as an assistant, <coughs> and uh, we went around and visited all the kids in April. The following August, she passed away with massive cancer. Wow. It was a small cell carcinoma style cancer. Um, was it related to the breast cancer? Or just a different cancer altogether? It was a different cancer altogether, but you know, I still think the cancer treatments that she went through definitely deteriorated her body and yep. made, it, made it much more susceptible Sometimes to the cure is worse than the disease, they say. Wow. Sometimes. Uh, but it was throughout her body, lungs, or, you know, they found mm -hmm. it in her lungs first, oh, wow. and why, by the time they were done, it was, it, it was all the way through her body and her mm -hmm. bones and everything else. So wow. within a very short period of time, like two and a half, three weeks from the time it was diagnosed, she passed away. Wow. So with that being said, yeah, you're going to honor I'm, her. I'm going to ride for Roswell. In Buffalo next in what two weeks? Two weeks from today. Two weeks from today. Um, I've raised five hundred dollars through uh, friends' donations. Um, some of them here. Um, I've donated some of my. I work for a local restaurant that does delivery, and I've donated a portion of my tips mm -hmm. from that job. Great. To. Uh, meet my $500 that I wanted. What'd you raise, Galen? I currently am over $3,000. I just went over $3,000 a couple of days ago. $3,000. $3,000. So $3,500 for the Zook boys. Yep. Randy, well, I've still got people that... Are you still going? <laughs> I'm st he's still, still twisting. That have not you still have two weeks to go, yeah. Yeah, I still have some arm twisting. Yeah. Me, you know? Well, actually, <laughs> actually, I think donations will be accepted even after the ride I for a period of so, time. Like September, maybe? Mm -hmm. but and Randy, have you um, I'm doing you really bad. I'm really bad. big mouth, but I'm a coward to ask people for money. <laughs> so, so donate to Randy. Go so to if there's any, any of Randy Bird's friends right now, <laughs> give, give them the spiel. Uh, you just go to uh, the Ride for Roswell. <coughs> um, you're going to pick a rider for a donation. Uh, you can type in Randall, R-A-N-D-A-L-L, -L, last name Bert. Um, it'll show up my name with Jamestown. Um, there's a place on my page to donate. And um, I have 30 miles this year. I'm going the other way from 62 and a half to 44 to 30. But uh, I'm trying to dedicate a mile to anybody. If you donate, just pick a mile you want me to ride for your uh, memory of a relative or a friend. And um, we have little cards that you can tie onto your bicycle. Um, I'm going to write the names and try to write the miles. So when I'm riding, like, say, mile five, um, if 
been a request to ride that for Reed Power's sister. Um, I think it's mile possibly 10 for um, my ass to ride for Reed. Um, I have a kid I want, or a, yeah, not a kid anymore, <laughs> a guy I went to school with, I'm riding for his brother. Um, for myself, I'm gonna be riding for my sister. Um, also for my mother, she turned 85. She just went through cancer a few years ago. Uh, she didn't have as much luck as my sister on the breast cancer, but uh, they got her through it. So um, you just, you know, if you want to donate and there's a place to put a thing on Facebook, just what mile you'd like me to ride, and I'll uh, ride that mile in memory of your uh, relative or friend. You're, you're riding for my mom, aren't you? Yep, I'm riding I for I forgot what mile it is. Mile 100 or something? Uh, <laughs> it's got to be under like 30, but uh, I'm okay. just doing it the... Yeah, well, I, I had to go down. I mean, the first year I was a little more into biking. The last year I hadn't biked in a couple of years, so it was, I'd only done maybe a couple 10, 15 mile rides, so. Right. But um, over the years, I have actually got my body around the lake a couple times. And, mm -hmm. But um, when you go out to the University of Buffalo, I mean, it was so flat out that way. Yeah. It's yeah. not like Chautauqua County where Ooh. every three feet's got a big hill. Uh, yeah. I have no idea the first year where I was. Um, we left the college and just kept going. I was in Clarence, Hackard oh, Park okay. Falls, sure, sure. Alabama Swamps. These are places Galen will find out this year. Mm -hmm. This year, Jeff and I are uh, yeah, we're riding following together. the river. The buds. Following the river, I know we go under the Grand Island Bridge. And oh, so you actually have a map this time. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm just, <laughs> we head back towards Black Rock, and then somewhere we go over a pedestrian bridge over the okay. 190, okay. and then back to the yeah. college. Um, okay, I want to give you guys a, a little breather here. So we're talking about uh, these fellows going to uh, ride a lot for uh, the uh, Roswell uh, ride, for, ride for, uh, about cancer and so forth. So coming out of this, it reminds me of a few things. Ladies, get your mammograms annually or whatever your doctor suggests. I don't know how many times I've heard, well, I didn't go for five years because I thought I'd be fine. And in that time, something came up. Everybody, everybody, get your colonoscopies. Whatever your doctor tells you, the schedule. We had a couple scares in my family with polyps that were, one was cancerous and there had to be some surgery. Another person had precancer and luckily, as the doctor said, you just won the lottery today because they caught it in time. Gentlemen, prostate checkups. Get that taken care of regularly. Yeah, Galen says, bring it on, I'm ready for it. <laughs> you sing a high note for a minute, but it's worth it. And get the P was it P P a PSA or PAS, whatever the test PAS. is, PAS test. And, uh, but just keep, keep yourselves checked and get baseline data and information about your bodies. Sorry, you can man. prevent a lot of this cancer. Okay, we're going to take a phone call and I got a trivia question for you guys before we go to the bike. So, good morning, uh, caller, how are you? Good morning, this is Linda, Linda how are you? Linda Spaulding from the it's Office of the Aging. It's so great <laughs> to see all of you there at the round table. Well, thank you. <laughs> can you tell who's got the most hair? Oh, that's me. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so what's up? Uh, well, I just wanted to call in and say uh, good morning to you and say how happy I am to see all of you on. Well, thank you. Yeah, thank you. and uh, I I heard about uh, your 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 trip to Buffalo <laughs> and the Alabama swamp. Mm hmm. These guys. <laughs> My grandfather used to have a. Um, a hunting camp at the Alabama swamps, and it now has been turned into a bird sanctuary. Oh, okay. Very. It's really beautiful there. Well, I'm going to find out. <laughs> First thing. <laughs> First yeah, he, he, was, um, he was forced to sell it. Well, you know, he was ready to sell it anyway, but they, you know, whoever operates it, I don't know. I think it's the state preserve. They, um, they, they wanted that for animals and it, it really is beautiful there. Awesome. Hey Linda, you're one of my supporters. I want to thank you but uh, talking about the Alabama swamps, um, the year I did my bike ride I called into the show from the Alabama swamps. I uh, parked my bike and the guy goes, you do not want to be right here. I was parked in Poison Ivy. So <laughs> <laughs> I got out of there real fast. I got lucky but uh, 
He, his job, you know, as a volunteer was to make sure people didn't park in poison ivy. <laughs> oh, well, not only is there poison ivy, it's loaded with mosquitoes once you get in there. I didn't see the alligators, though. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, one, what, one thing that I really remember are the beautiful black-eyed Susans and the wild blackberries. Wow. That, and it, it still smells. If you go there, like in the summer or the fall, you still get that odor of the blackberries in the swampland, and it just brings back such beautiful memories for me. Okay, great. Well, I'm calling because we uh, are going to be opening a new computer training site at the Brackton Library, okay. and there is free computer training. We do have it in Dunkirk, the Dunkirk Free Library, Westfield Patterson, Jamestown Office for Aging, and now soon, I think sometime in the first part of July, will be the Dunkirk Library. So anybody who has any interest at all in um, entry-level computer training okay. is one-on-one. -on -one. Awesome. And we do have jobs with the Chautauqua County Office for Aging Senior Aid Program. There are also other services with the Office for the Aging. Great. Well, it's a great program. And uh, as I remind people all the time, get off the couch, call these folks. There's, there's, you can volunteer, you can work, you can learn a new skill. There's so much these folks offer. Just give them a call. And they're, if, if they don't have the answer, they'll find someone that does. But they usually do have the answer. What of the staff usually do? Because it's a very diversified department. Okay. Well, Linda, cheer on these guys. Is they're going to need it, okay? <laughs> well, good luck with everything. Okay, thank thanks you. for calling thank in. We'll, ta we'll talk to you soon. Thank okay, you. have a great weekend. Happy Father's Day. Well, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. All bye right. Bye-bye now. Okay, folks, you're watching the Senior Report. We're talking with Galen and Randy and, and Jeff, and we're talking about the ride for Roswell. And I have just two quick questions. What year was Roswell Hospital started? 30s? 1898. Wow. And really? Who, and who founded the hospital? Probably some guy named Roswell. What was his last name? <laughs> New Mexico? You, so that, so <laughs> Area 51, yeah. Joe. <laughs> okay. Roswell Park was oh, really? his name. I always wow. thought it was like Menlo Park or, you know, like yeah, Delaware so Park so, or yeah, whatever. Oh, oh. His wow, name was Dr. Roswell Park in 1890, or 19, 1898. Wow. Okay. Before we run out of time, these guys oh, want to show you short. the vehicles that they're going to be uh, using for this horrific ride <laughs> as far as distance. Well, actually, actually, I walk. I walk a lot. So we're, who's, who, Jeff, are you going to be the man here? I, I, we actually have three different styles of bikes. Okay. I don't know. We'll get to them in a sec. We have a mountain bike, a hybrid bike, and a road bike. Hybrid is electric and gas? No. <laughs> uh, you wish. <laughs> Randy wishes, <laughs> okay, <laughs> but it's it's a cross between the the road bike and the mountain bike. Okay, uh, in the there, gearings. There's just get different gearings. In, okay. in the gearings, in the way the gearings set up and everything else. Here, I'll get That's rid of my mic and okay. I'll let Galen talk about that mm -hmm. a little bit more. Okay, he really didn't wasn't aware that I was going to do this. But no, you know, that's okay. Well, we decided we're going to just sort of create this as we go along. All right, so yeah, Jeff is going to go over and well, he's going to be the Vanna White of bicycles here. <laughs> the biggest question oh, hey, is. I think the biggest question is, is how do you, where do you start? If you're going to start, if you decide you want to uh, get out, ride some bike, where, where do you start? Okay, so what's this first bike we're looking at here? This is, this is a mountain bike. Okay. Um, um, there's a whole, I want, do, do I dare say genre? Yes. For mountain biking, different, different styles, the gears, the gears are different. Tires the road are different. Bike, Heavier it tires. Have a solid frame on it. There's, mm -hmm. a, there's a spring in the middle here, so it can. It actually the whole bike. Actually oh, gives. a little yep. shock absorber there. Yep. Yeah. The the front the front uh, forks on this one are also spring loaded as. So yeah. now who's going to be on this bike? This is a bike that has been kind of retired. Oh, I okay. This one for several years went through a few a couple of back a couple of tires on it. So would you ride this in the ride? No, no, no. Okay. This this is stri uh, basically strictly uh, trails in the woods. All right. So this right. for information only right now. Yeah. Okay. And basically, it's a Walmart bike. That's what I suggest you start out on. 
is a Walmart bike, so you don't spend a whole up. lot of money. See if you like it. Find out if you're really gonna this bike enjoy is about it. $150 away, it says. Yep. Okay. All right. My biggest problem is getting a nice soft seat. Whoa, Timber! I just replaced the mirror too, because <laughs> it tipped over and broke. Uh, we just replaced an entire bicycle there. <laughs> All right. All right. So what is this bike here? This one's a hybrid. Hybrid. All right. Tell me why it's a hybrid. I don't understand uh, that. It has the springy front end. Okay, sort of like the mountain bike. That the mountain bike does. Uh, I believe the seat post. Yeah, yep. seat post. A little cushy there. And the gearing sort of. Well, the different. biggest difference with that is it has a mountain climbing gear. Oh, where my bike and that my bike has it'll have the same they call them the cassette in the back, mm -hmm. but they have one bigger one for cl for climbing hills. They're normally a heavier bike. The tires are a little big bigger. Okay, you can go do on road and off road with that. Okay, so, so we have a mountain bike that is for all terrain and getting out in this and the some woods. serious off roaders right. out mudding. They have big competitions mm -hmm. mountain biking. The hybrid you would use for either or, either or. It's more of a recreational. Now, would you ride this at the at Roswell? You can ride, you can ride a hybrid at Roswell. Okay. And who's riding that one? Anybody? This is this oh, one that's, Randy's. that's Randy's. Okay, Where, and is, he, is that from a spe specialty shop for bikes or? Um, I bought mine at Howley Loft. Uh, okay. This is where we uh, compete because Jeff and Galen are mm -hmm. cycle shop boys. Okay. I'm a Howley Loft. All right, let's move on to the last bike here. As soon as Jeff is done rearranging the deck here. All right, and this is uh, really, this is my bike. This is your bike. This has got like some really interesting features on it. It extremely light. Extre what, what's it? Is it like hollow tubing or? That's all hollow tubing. It's lightweight aluminum. Mm -hmm. It weighs about nineteen pounds. Holy mackerel! That's that's less than a computer. Yeah. <laughs> nineteen pounds? I don't think so. Twenty pounds. Okay. It it, it is. Nice. All right, and this is what you're um, going to ride in. This the, is in what I'm going to ride. Now I, I got to put the chain back on since my brother so graciously knocked it on its <laughs> keister. <laughs> but um, I I'm sorry. No, nah, it's no big deal. Um, this is strictly a road bike. Okay. This is actually um, Trek is a is a, is a um, basically a lot of pros ride ride Trek bikes. Mm -hmm. This bike was about thirteen hundred dollars. A hybrid will run you about five hundred dollars. If you want to get into what the pros ride, you're talking eight, nine, ten thousand dollars. But that's all carbon fiber, very high performance, um, no cables. It's all electronic mm -hmm. shifting, all that stuff. But this is definitely a, a road bike. Um, the tires are a lot narrower. Mm -hmm. It's it's a lot stiffer than what a, a hybrid would be. This is for someone that wants to do. 1,500, 2,000 miles a year. Okay, serious biker. Serious. How fast will that go? I've actually had that bike up to a little over 50 miles an hour down a big hill. Wow. Okay, guys, yeah. guess what? Two minutes left. So, yeah. Randy, you've been sitting kind of quiet, so why don't you uh, wrap things up for us as far as what's gonna, what you guys are doing in two weeks. So, uh, next fr or Friday the 27th, we go out. They have a big grand opening uh, celebration at UB Stadium. Mm -hmm. And... Um, Last year they had Leanne Rhymes, they had inspirational speakers. Um, Jeff or er, Galen's coming in on a bicycle during the opening ceremony. Two hundred people are coming in. Uh, he can explain it better because I can't even pronounce it. Petroleum, Peloton, whatever. Peloton. Peloton. <laughs> Peloton. Yeah, uh, he's coming up from Roswell Hospital. Mm -hmm. Two hundred people side by side, twelve miles. They all come in. Wow. And. Um, Big ceremony. Oh, yeah. It's yeah. All right. And one more time, the, the if people want to donate to, to any of you guys? Um, you can just go on to rideforraswell.org, um, type in any of our names. Click, click on Donate, mm -hmm. and then type in any name, and our name will come up, and then it will go directly to a, a donation page, and you can donate to any one of us. Personally, my original goal was $1,000. I have basically tripled that, which is just an amazing thing to me. R Donate to Randy. Okay. <laughs> All right, guys, we got to leave it there. I want to wish you the best luck in your race and be safe out there, and thanks for, for taking the time to do these sorts of things. One other thing, too. Oh, one if, more thing. Quick. If you go to the site and you want to volunteer to do something, there is a tab to click on to volunteer to do volunteer work. 
They still need a lot of volunteers. Okay, great. Okay, so we'll be hearing back from these guys. Hopefully you'll call in and let us know if uh, Randy's stuck somewhere. In the mm -hmm. <laughs> we got, uh, I want to thank Karen uh, Harvey for coming in today as our guest commentator. Chuck Kelsey, who was good enough to come in and cover the camera. Chris over in engineering, Chris Burt, Jeff Zook, and Randy Burt, and Galen Zook for being our guest today. Everybody have a great Father's Day. Doc Hamels, be well. See you next week.